Wild clematis is a climbing plant that grows in lime-rich soils and flowers abundantly in the autumn. And it climbs not by means of tendrils or hooks uh, or by winding its way around a host plant in the way honeysuckle does, for example, but by means of the leaf stalks. If the stalk of the leaf comes in contact with an obstacle, it winds its way softly around it and then subsequently becomes hard as wire. You can see a good example here. There you are, where that leaf stalk has wrapped its way around the stem of another part of the plant and it's unbreakable almost. It can clamber this way as much as 30 metres up into the canopy of trees and it can completely smother hedges. The flowers, the flowers are produced abundantly in the autumn uh, and it has dispensed with petals, there are no petals. These four structures here, uh, they are downy, creamy white sepals and they, they fall off soon after the flower opens. And the most eye-catching part of the flower then uh, is this bunch of, this uh, brush-like structure, 50 or so uh, creamy white stamens. And then in the centre of the flower, you have a cluster of yellowy green individual carpels. And it is these carpels which, in a way, are the most interesting part because they are a wonderful example of one of the most fascinating aspects of floral biology. Namely, uh, the way in which particular parts of the flower, uh, in all sorts of different ways, once they have carried out their primary function in the flower, are co-opted for a different function. In this case, the part of the flower which is co-opted is the style. Now the style uh, is the part of the carpel that links the ovary with the, the stigma. And once fertilization has taken place, what happens to the style, which is quite short here and covered with very short downy hairs, what happens is that it greatly elongates. It greatly elongates, as you can see here, and those short hairs develop into this extraordinary plumed structure, which as the weeks wear on and autumn advances, will eventually become this wonderfully plumed fruit, which can carry the seeds a remarkable distance from the parent plant. The flowers smell rather like hawthorn. There is no nectar but the abundant pollen is sought by numerous bees, wasps and hoverflies at a time of year when supplies are scarce. The stamens mature centripetally from the outside in before the carpels are receptive, but these begin to mature before all the stamens have dehisced, so they can be pollinated by the innermost stamens if they have not already been cross-pollinated. Apart from its pollinating visitors, wild clematis is the sole food plant for several species of moths and wood mice sometimes line their nests with the fluffy fruits. Although the leaves and flowers of wild clematis have an acid burning taste uh, and can cause irritation of the eyes and nose and blisters on the skin if the plant is bruised, uh, it was widely used in the past to treat eye infections, uh, inflammatory conditions, the symptoms of gonorrhea, as well as stress and skin irritations. Uh, the young shoots, indeed, have been harvested, are still harvested in parts of Italy uh, to make a particular type of, of omelette, uh, frittata di Vitalbini. For thousands of years, for thousands of years, the pliant stems have been used to make baskets and ropes. Uh, particularly favoured for binding the sheaves of corn because mice don't attack the stems. A more unusual property of the dried stems is that when they're ignited they don't catch fire. They don't catch fire and they draw uh, as a cigar does. So that in many parts of Europe, in many parts of Europe, 
uh, they were used, have been used as a sort of substitute cigarette.